Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Blue Maxima and I'm here checking out Stardew Valley with my very creaky chair. I'm going to warn you right now that this isn't going to be anywhere near thorough, mainly because the amount of time you would need to put into this game to actually see everything is ridiculous. Like, just to cite an example, I went and had a look at how long the reviews, the highest rated reviews on Steam had been played for. The first one was a thousand hours. The second was 150, the third was 120, and there were a few that had played for like 20 to 30 hours, but the average was around 100 hours. And I've only got three-ish. So, yeah, as much as I would like to play some more, I unfortunately just don't have the time. There are two more games coming in the next two days. I just, I can't for the life of me spare the time. So, I have played through half of one month. There are four months in this game that are basically the seasons. It's a bit odd. And there's just so many different things that I haven't actually gone to in this game yet. But the wiki has filled me in on slightly. I tried not to look at it too much because I don't want the entire game spoiled for me. But... Well, let me put it this way. There's a few things in this game that really do need some spoiling if you're not particularly patient about wandering around and seeing if you can just find, stumble upon what you're looking for naturally. So, here we are. It's Wednesday the 17th, and we can talk to, we can talk to the TV. We can watch the TV. It's going to rain all day tomorrow. That's good. That means I don't actually have to water anything tomorrow. It's also raining today, apparently, which is nice. Fair enough, I don't actually have to water my stuff today. So, this is what my farm looks like right now. It's not much. Unfortunately, I don't have anything in the way of the animal coo... Coop? Or <laughs> the animal coo. So this is animal farm now, is it? Uh, I don't have much in the way of the animal coop. I don't have a bunch of other things. There are a couple of things I do have. I do have the furnace, which if you put coal into it, followed by some copper you can or some minerals, you can turn them into copper bars. I do have a chest over here with a bunch of my different resources. I could actually go and get a coop if I had like 4,000 gold, but I don't have 4,000 gold right now because as it turns out, making money in this game is actually kind of difficult. But nevertheless, this is the farm. This is what it looks like. If you want to put down seeds, you use one of your tools in the toolbar along the bottom there. You can scroll it with the L and R buttons. You can also press the triangle button to access the, your menu and change what's in your inventory from here. You have a bunch of different tools, they're all pretty obvious. So, pickaxe for taking care of rocks, scythe for taking care of grass, hoe for actually, like, hoeing down terrain, as you can see there. There's a bunch of other things, like the scarecrow here, for example, scares away crows, and funnily enough, he talks to you. I've scared off seven crows. Oh, uh, well, as long as he isn't telling me to press B. And you can do all sorts of things. Like, I can craft stuff, for example. Like, I can craft gates and fences. These are actually quite useful because you do need to actually fence around an area in order to keep, like, wild grass from showing up. Which is, uh, quite the problem. If, if you understand that. So, yeah. That's just a really quick example of that. You can craft using items in your inventory. There's trees and stuff down here. This is the part of the farm that I haven't cleared yet. You can see that there's a bunch of stuff here that I still need to get rid of, but everything that you have to do throughout the day is limited by your energy meter. You can see down the bottom right there that I have an energy meter. You can also move around the cursor, but it doesn't actually let you do too much. I mean, there are a couple of things it lets you do, but generally you'll be doing everything via the button controls, and the button controls are actually decent, but we'll get onto them in more depth shortly. So, yeah. You have an energy meter in the bottom right there, and that decreases the more stuff you do. The more stuff you put down, the more stuff that you... The more ground that you hoe, the more water that you plant, the more everything, more or less. Pretty much anything that basically would require any sort of physical exertion will take away from your energy bar. And you need to keep track of all of this stuff, because you need to water your stuff every day. You need to make sure your animals get fed once you have the coop. If you want to make friends with someone, you have to go and take care of that. Because you are also limited by your physical time. You can see in the top right there, the time's already... The time's already... The time's passes pretty quick in this game. So, you need to worry about what you're going to do. Because everything has a schedule. If we wander off to the right here, we'll actually go into town. 
And town has a bunch of different places you can go, things you can buy, and just general stuff to do with the locals. So if I were to, I can pop into the clinic to buy things like uh, health increasing drink and all that, and I can talk to this guy here. He does work here because it's 10 o'clock right now, but if I wait long enough, which I'm not going to do, but if I wait long enough, he'll eventually stop meeting the counter and go do something else. This is what happens with all of the two dozen, uh, all of the two dozen people that show up in this game. There are a bunch of different people that will often just wander around town or in their houses or what have you, and you can only talk to them at certain times of the day. If you don't know them well enough, they won't actually let you into their houses uninvited. So you need to worry about wandering around and actually talking to them. The first quest in the game is actually go and talk to everyone. Like this is Lewis, for example. So I can actually give him cookies. So yeah, he actually liked that. And that'll actually increase um, my... Uh, what's the word? Relationship with him. You can see how your relationship is doing with everyone here. As I said before, though, it is kind of a problem to actually find, um, it is actually kind of a problem to find all the people, because they are actually on their own schedules, and they will be all over the place. They might be somewhere completely different the next day. They are pretty consistent. If you do go to, like, the same place at the same time, you might see the same person. Like, the village drunkard, Pam, or she's not really the drunkard, but she's more, she, she is, a um... How do I put this politely? Uh, I, I got no way to put it politely, so I'm not going to. But I find her wandering around the Joja Mart, which is actually part of the story and all that, in um, at around 1 o'clock every day. So, yeah. So if I hit the triangle button, you can see that we've actually got a lot of different places to go on the map, which is this. So, you got your map there, um, your farm there, I should say. A ranch, Willow Lane, Sewer, Graveyard, the Mayor's Manor, the Blacksmith, the Joja Mart, the Community Center. Let's go to the Community Center, because we haven't actually been in here yet. This might give... Well, I have been in here once for a story event. But let's see if I can actually do something in here and cause a little bit of a cutscene to play, because these do tend to show up from time to time. So, one of the main plot points in this game is actually getting the community center back up on its feet. There is actually a little bit of a story going through the entire thing. It takes a few weeks to really get going. I haven't seen too much of it yet. Oh my. What's this meant to be? The cursor lets, lets me move around. So, I assume that's some kind of language done by the little green tiddly beasts that run around here, but... I wouldn't know, because I said I haven't actually been in here before. But yeah, there is a bit of a minor story running through. The entire plot of the game is you got sick of regular life, which is uh, more or less like a parody of working for Amazon in the, you know, bog-standard uh, white cubicles lining the walls forever sort of thing. And your grandfather left you... Your, um, your grandfather left you this farm, which you can come here to rejuvenate and do all sorts of lovely things too. So... They say it's going to rain all day tomorrow, so I have a little bit more time to wander around. There's actually a couple of things I'd like to do just while I'm wandering around here. You can do things like chop down the trees here, for example. Well, apparently... Can you chop this one? I don't actually have my sound on, but it's not actually... Yeah, it's not actually wobbling. I'm going to assume I can't. Although it did actually take my, um... did actually take the energy away to swing at you bastards. So yeah, you can come to all these different places and buy all the different resources you need. And you can see that you've got a bunch of different kinds of things you can buy. Cosmetic and not. And you can even talk to this lady to upgrade your house, which will cost an absolute ton of money. Because it takes a long while. Excuse me. It takes a long while to actually earn the money and resources that you need for buying stuff in this game. Because... Farming is relatively slow. All your crops and stuff actually take upwards of several days to successfully farm. And there are other ways of making money. So, I will actually go and show off one of those right now. If I can find a good body of water. This will do. You can go fishing. That's one way to make money. You can actually go and sell your fish to the fish store down in the bottom right corner. You can fish at the beach. You can fish at the town's river. You can fish here. And... Any time now, please? 
Come on. Please? Oh, there we go. Okay, we got a hit. So I gotta press the square button in order to, um... Yeah, I gotta press the square button in order to keep up with this fish, but if it, um... If that meter falls down all the way, then I am screwed. But I actually want to see what that chest is. What's in that chest? There we go. And fall back down, and I lost the fish. Bollocks. Let's give that another shot. So how's your day been? Might as well talk about the presentation. The game is gorgeous. Like, they have done a fantastic job in making this feel like a little homely country town. Which is actually something I grew up in, so I would know. Although, like, not really, but, like, trust me, I would know. And they, they have more or less nailed the feel of just, like, the small town in the middle of nowhere that's kind of being, um, pushed over by the by the big evil companies and all that. They have, they have nailed it. Apparently I've got a chub. Just gonna let that hang in the air, although I still have pants on. But you get the general idea, more or less. It, it feels like they've done a fantastic job with the presentation all around, the graphics and the sound. It really does feel like you're just wandering around a little town and doing all sorts of things to try and, you know, like, keep up with your money and your purchases and all that. The base gameplay loop is pretty damn simple. You can choose whether or not you want to farm, you want to fish. I can go and sell these fish. Like that big wooden chest that was next to the red chest that I colored to different differentiate the two. The You can go and sell anything you want at that chest, right? So you can sell uh, items you find in the mines, which we'll get to. You can sell fish. You can sell all your different resources that you pick up. If you want to make a uh, business out of wandering around just chopping down trees and um, harvesting those resources. It won't last very long, but you can do it if you want to. Of course, the game has all the different seasons as well. So when you pass into a new season, all the crops swap out. So you do kind of need to be ready for... Oh, apparently I got some Joja Cola. You do need to be ready for that. And of course, you can do more work per day by getting things like consumable items. Like that Joja Cola there will actually give me some bonus energy for the day. But of course, I'm still limited by the hard time limit, which is the the day, of course. So, yeah, now that it's 5 o'clock, there's not really that much else I can do. Some places will close, some people will go into their houses and stay there for the day. And it just continues on like that. I haven't actually run into that many people. Usually you run into a couple of people wandering around, but apparently I haven't just yet. There are people who don't like you, of course, to start off with and all that, but you can, of course, just, like, give them presents and eventually they'll come around to you. And, of course, you can get married because that's one thing they always expect in the... You, you should always expect, I should say, in these sorts of farming RPGs. There are little events that happen from time to time. I did participate in the egg hunt in the egg festival, which happened not too long ago. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to wander back. And I'm going to actually till some soil, because... Should I till some soil? I should do something else. I'm probably going to go into the mines today, but I wouldn't have been able to spend too long in there, because that is a hard timer. If you spend too long outside, you will eventually just fall over and need to be, um... You will need to be recovered for a fee, which is something I found out the hard way the first night I played, which is, you know, interesting enough, I suppose. Killing the soil really isn't doing much for me, but I'll be able to buy a bunch of seeds tomorrow, come back and plant them. Thankfully, actually, planting seeds doesn't cost you that much, but it's the wandering around and watering them every day which will get you. And of course, there are things you can craft to help you out with this. I can actually craft a sprinkler, which will uh, water everything around it, which is over here. There it is. But I need an iron bar to do it, and I'm, that means I'm going to need a better pickaxe, which means I just need to go and get some more money to actually upgrade my pickaxe, because that's a thing you can do. And, of course, you got your collectibles over here, so you can see all the stuff you've shipped, all the stuff you've um, caught, and all of that. And here are your options. You can show the character portraits, always show the tool hit look. That might actually be useful. Uh, placement tile indicator, controller style menus, all your sound sliders. You can turn off the dialogue typing sound. I wish you could make the dialogue boxes all just complete instantly, because I'm a fast reader, and it's just a little bit too slow for me. But, yeah, there's all your different controls and all that. 
not controls, um, options. You can choose a campfire for moderate amount of light. There's your map. Here's your levels. You actually level up the more you, um, the more you play. And efficiency means you just, you can use tools more efficiently. It's that simple, really. And, of course, your inventory, as you've seen before. You do actually have a puppy. He should be up here somewhere, I think. Oh, no, he might have wandered off inside. Yeah, that is actually really useful. Wrong tool. Also wrong tool. Correct tool. Hooray. Alright, but let's go to sleep for the day. Hopefully something will have finished up. Oh, no, wait. Wait. Let's actually put something in here first. Uh, get rid of the cola. Get rid of some fish. Get rid of the green algae. And I want to hold on to all these other resources. So let's just put that last fish in there. Items have qualities that you can upgrade. Uh, well... Not so much upgrade, but you can do things like fertilize the soil, which gives you a high chance of getting better items. So now that we've gone to sleep, I get to level up my fishing rod proficiency. I get to see all my items that I sold off, and I got 250 gold, which isn't that much in the grand scheme of things. You could probably do decently if you wanted to just, like, fish for a bit, but, you know, it's a little slow, and... You would have to make a lot of money in order to upgrade your stuff, so it's better you try and do two things at once. Two or three things at once, more like. But, at the same time, it is actually kind of stressful, if I'm being perfectly honest. What's the weather going to be like? It's going to be a beautiful sunny day tomorrow, which means I am going to have to water. The day is in my hands, and living off the land will give you a nice tip. When it rains, you don't have to water your crops. Thank you very much for telling me that, I already said that. Uh, oh. Nope, still can't pick it up. God damn it. Right. <laughs> I've been told to go and visit the wizard. The wonderful wizard of Stardew Valley, apparently. Fair enough. I didn't even know that was a thing. Why is there a wizard? I mean, I saw the tower earlier as I was wandering around, but that just makes no sense. Anyway. So... Let's actually go and buy some um, seeds and stuff to put in because I'm, I'm going to want to make some relatively quick money. So let's go to Pierre's, see what he has for sale. Oh, open 9 a.m. Bastard. I, I, I do that all the time. I keep coming here thinking, oh, I'll be able to go to the shop and buy something. No, I have to wait two hours because screw me, right? Let's go fishing. <laughs> I, I know, but th there really isn't much to do while I wait for the shops to open. Missed the grab. What else is there to talk about? Um, well, as I said before, the the whole thing about the um, the whole scheduling, where you have to try and make it all work around the other people's schedules, and you know the rain and the just general needing to take care of all your business. It can all be a little bit overwhelming, if I'm being perfectly honest, but honestly, it's always been a bit overwhelming for me in these sorts of games anyway, so... I mean, the time management stuff is alright. There are little things that you can miss. I've been told by someone who's played the game quite thoroughly, but other than that, as far as I know, the game's pretty much got infinite time, so you can spend as much time here as you like, which is actually... Really good. And there are places I haven't been to yet. Like, you can go to the desert, which will actually give you, like, um, extra collectibles and um, stuff. And, of course, we haven't been to the mines yet, which is what we're actually going to do today. Smallmouth base, 14 inches. Cool. Alright, let's go. Let's go to the shop. By the time I get there, it'll have, um, it'll have opened. And the shortness of the days honestly kind of annoys me. You spend so much time, uh... Doing stuff. Oh, hello. Can I talk to you? This weather makes you thirsty. I don't actually have any cola for you, but would you like a fish? Uh, swap my toolbar. Hey, come here. Let me give you a fish. You don't really like it? Fair enough. I'm going to Pierre's. Good morning, Pierre. So, alright. So, I can buy passive sneeze, which is what I'm going to do. I am also going to buy some... Fertilizer, which I can actually make make pretty cheaply. I don't know why I bothered to buy that much because that means I've basically got no, no money now. Great, but well, if I'm being honest, I'm not going to have time to play through this again, so I don't really mind too much. 
Let's go and actually check out the combat side of things. Once I've walked there. Alright, let's talk about some other stuff then. Let's talk about the game's port quality. The quality of the port is... Not great. Now, this was ported by Sick Head Games. If you're familiar, not familiar with them, they actually did a few Vita ports before and... They were of varying quality, but usually pretty good. And this is like... I, I don't mean to be too hard on this game. Game's port, because it is pretty good. It's... Not amazing, but it's pretty good. You can spend a fair amount of time playing and not run into too many problems. However, there are some weird ones that crop up from time to time. My my game has crashed once, and there have been a lot of stutters that have made me think, oh, the game is actually going to crash, but it actually didn't, which is a little bit of an oddity, but it's not too much to worry about if it doesn't actually crash the game. However, the game has crashed on me once and thankfully this game auto saves every time you uh finish the day and considering the days in this game are usually no le no longer than like 15 minutes it's not that big of a deal but obviously it would be nice if it was actually patched so the game does actually have combat and there are apparently a fair few more different kinds of monsters than just the one than just the one like green slimes and just like little dudes that wander around there are hermit crabs that, are in, that look like rocks until you get too close to them. Those guys are bastards. And I can actually go back up the top and go to another floor, which is what I'm going to do, actually, just to demonstrate why I didn't go to a slightly lower floor just yet. You can go back up to the main floor via elevator every five floors. The reason why I haven't gone too deep yet is because I need more money, because I need to actually be able to craft torches. Well, well. Oh, you need sap, right, derp. I thought you needed coal. I'm clearly in too much of a Minecraft phase. Right, uh, just beat that down a bit. Also, I'm probably gonna need like more energy and stuff to get further down floors because mining really takes it out of you, I gotta say. But you know, the more you do it, the more, the more energy efficient you'll become about it, which is, you know, perfectly nice. Yeah, the general idea is just to try and find the way down, which I have. Usually there's like a dark spot around here somewhere. Also more enemies to fight. There is an adventure- Oh, there's there's the hermit crab. Just swing away. Combat isn't particularly interesting, but it's not it's not meant to be the main part of the game. The main part of the game is meant to be the farm management, which is pretty pretty good. I don't play these top kinds of games very much, so I'm not the, the best person to ask about it. But what's here forms a pretty suitable gameplay loop and there don't seem to be that many problems like in the gameplay itself other than stuff that's just inherent to the genre or at least in my personal point of view like the, you know, like the really short days and the fact that your energy meter is a little bit constrictive and all of that sort of stuff, right? It's nothing really particularly bad. You do also have a journal that will keep track of all your... Well, I should probably let you read that for longer than a second or two. But you do have this journal that lets you track quests. You can get disposable... Um, not disposable. You can get, um, uh, procedurally generated quests. Like, bring me this item. Help me find my thing that I lost. And all of that for a little bit of bonus money. Out the front of the store every day. And you can also check the calendar. And the calendar does have, like, all your things like your events. And your character's birthdays. And your... Just general way of planning out your life, and it's it's all nice and cozy, is what I'm trying to say. Like, it's all really just nice. It's nice and relaxing, except for the whole time management bit and what have you. Bloody mole? Come here, I'll, I'll beat you senseless, is what I'll do. There we go, and I even got a geode! You can take geodes to the um, museum, which is actually what I'm going to do. I'm going to go back down and show you the museum and the blacksmith as well, just to get a little bit more of a um, display going on. Um, just a little bit more of the game in there. 
There is, of course, the Animal Crossing style. Please find every object of a certain kind that you can and bring it to my museum for safekeeping. This is actually a lot like Animal Crossing now that I think about it. But the, yeah, the general thing about, um, the, uh, sorry, my head is not working with me today. Uh, as I was saying about the performance though, it can get a little bit stuttery. And it, as I said, there has been one crash. Hopefully they'll be able to patch out some of the problems here. You could actually see it just struggle a little bit there. But it's actually... Just overall, this game is really good at what it does. That's basically all I've got to say about it. It does the whole... Um, making a farm in a small time town, starting from nothing, and building it up. It feels satisfying already. It is slow. I just need to figure out where the fuck I am right now. Uh, the blacksmith shouldn't be too... Oh, yeah, there, there's the museum. All right. So I can actually stop in here. This is actually the most likely place to make the game crash, just warning you. But you, I can actually come over here and see that um, there's all the stuff. Actually, when does the blacksmith close? I should probably get over there really flipping fast. No, nope, it's already closed. Shit. Right, oh, well. So you can see there that um, there's all your uh, different stones and all that. The more, you can actually sell them on, too, if you like, but you can also just donate them to the museum, which is what I've been doing. Just because it's a quest, and that's a thing that you have to do. The blacksmith, unfortunately, is already closed, but you can actually take items to the blacksmith to have them improved. You could, he actually takes your tools for a couple of days to upgrade them, which is something I've been told, but I haven't been able to upgrade them yet. Because I haven't had the copper ore that I needed, which means I have to go into the mines and try and... Um, find as much co copper ore as possible, which means I needed to make the furnace earlier, which I did, thank god. And it just continues on like that. You constantly have a new set of goals to accomplish and do and all of that fancy stuff. And it's good. Not my sort of thing, but it's still pretty good. There's the ranch, by the way. You can come here to buy animals and um, talk to the lady who runs the ranch and all of that. Fun stuff, with a big capital F. So uh, let's go back up and let's actually plant some seeds, huh? I actually have to put down the fertilizer first if I wanted to actually kick in. There we go. And now I just plant all my seeds. You can, of course, also... Ah, I don't know where the hell I was going with that sentence. Right. Let's go to sleep. You can eventually upgrade your house. You can upgrade your farm. You can upgrade your tools. You can upgrade everything. It's just... It's one of those games where progress is slow, but you've always got something to climb for. And... It does a pretty good job at doing that, and that's that's kind of what you need in one of these games. You need the immediate goals to help you towards the long-term goals, and they're doing pretty well in that sense. Save times are a little long. But if I come back out here now, we have a bunch of shit to water. Oh, but look, we can actually um we can actually grab a parsnip. Parsnips are very basic crops that you absolutely do need to that you absolutely do need to grow. It's the first crop you get, and it sells for... Well, it doesn't sell for much, but it sells for a decent amount. Is that done? Yeah, it's done. Awesome. Here's, here's the tedious part. You can, of course, make things like sprinklers and stuff, but apparently tools and just general buildings in this game will decay over time and you actually do need to go and repair them which is certainly something out of water thankfully i have a water source literally right here just got to finish watering all the crops you see Is dropping a little bit here. This still needs to be watered. This is why you get sprinklers, folks. 
which is why you buy a lot of resources, which is why you have to go into the mines, which is why you have to wait for a rainy day if you don't want to have half energy when you get there or spend more money on food. Yada, 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 yada. It all makes sense in the grand scheme of things. Ooh, I actually had mail. Wonder what's in the mail for me today. You can also apparently be victim of things like crows and... Oh, you need fresh cauliflower. That's lucky, lucky. I literally just picked one up, so I might as well go and turn that in straight away, because why the fuck not? Uh, okay, journal. J uh, Jody. Where does Jody live, actually? This is why I'm gonna- I have to look up the wiki to this game a lot, because... I- I have enough trouble remembering all the people's stuff here. Okay, Jody at One Willow Lane. Okay, I know where that is. Once we've given that to her, we can go give these geodes to the blacksmith, and we can, um... Then, then we can find out whether or not it's things that we can actually sell safely. Then we can water the path, apparently. Don't mind me, I'm just... I'm just leaving water all over the path, why not? Uh, yeah, here it is, One Willow Lane. Oh, it's locked. Now it's open! Literally a second later. Uh, Jody, 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 Jody. Jody? Jody! Okay, right. Swap to that. Give it the cauliflower. And that will give me some gold. Awesome. That would, that's way more gold than I would usually get for selling a cauliflower, so that was well worth the time. So let's go to the blacksmith, have a look at his upgrades, and give him these geodes to uh, rock the casbah with. He's across the bridge down here. Not that bridge. This bridge. They just, they just wander around and they're nice people and you can get... You can take the flowers too. Like, watch this. Hey, Abba... Oh. She must have wandered in here. Hey, I literally just found this daffodil outside ten seconds ago. Take it. Sorry, Penny. I really shouldn't treat you like that. The character art in this game is cute. Right. I was going to the blacksmith to give him the geodes. Right, blacksmith. So, I can shop here to... Ooh, I can actually buy the ore. That's kind of nice. And the, you can buy gold as well. And there's your tools that you need to upgrade. So you need 2,000 gold, which is a fair amount. And you also need five copper bars, which is a lot if you don't want to go and get it all yourself. I could go and buy a bunch of copper and then turn it into, um... Turn it into bars and then give it to him. But still, that would mean that I'd need to, um... You get the general idea. I need to balance my general idea. Alright, so what have I got? Three copper ore. Not that bad in the grand scheme. And five coal. Also not that bad in the grand scheme, actually. Nothing unique, which is a little unfortunate, but... Nothing that isn't... Like, I'm not, I'm not disappointed by that. That's actually some pretty decent resources. Uh... Okay. We'll go to the saloon. It's going to take us a little while to get there, and when we get there, we're going to need to wait for it to hit 12. Hello, Jess. You don't know me? Well, here. Have some slime. <laughs> oh, poor girl. Poor girl. She did not like that one bit. That's not the saloon. That's um the mayor's house. Apparently, there's a dog in there. Who would have thought? But yeah, Stardew Valley is... It's cozy. It's relaxing in a way that a farm simulator can be, while well, also stressful in the way a farm simulator can be. All the gameplay mechanics have been well tuned, everything makes sense, and you do always have that dangling carrot in front of you. The port is okay, not great. I hope they fix up the stuttering and the crashing issues. Although I've only had one crash so far, it is always annoying when it happens. But it's still a really nice game, and if you're looking for something even remotely along the lines of the sort of farming simulator thing that you'd get out of a game like this in, say, Harvest Moon, for example, this is an easy to recommend. A really easy one. I can buy drinks, and I can actually play on the arcade machines. There's a skull-shaped keyhole, and I can buy a Joja Cola if I want to, and I can actually play an arcade machine. 
I don't know why this is here, but it is. And apparently I got an extra life for shooting like the very first dude and there's different weapons you can get in this silly little mini game. I don't know what this is related to in any way, but it's neat that it's there. So yeah, that was a quick look at the Vita version of Stardew Valley. It's pretty good. Personally, I don't have the time to play it because if I'm going to be putting 100 hours into this game, there are like 100 other games in the queue ahead of it right now just because I got them first. But still, it's a really nice place to live, I guess is the best way to put it. Haley is ignoring me. Get slimed. <laughs> I don't know why I like that so much. But yeah. This has been Blue Maxima, and I will see you all next time.